Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign, or at least video, in TNN, which we're playing as Kamchatka with a special sub-mod called Kamchatka the Pacific Fleet. So if you'd like to read about the Pacific Fleet, please go right ahead, and which we pull down a little bit more as well, and we get to do a little bit of piracy and a little bit of smuggling for this short campaign, because if I remember correctly, with the link in the description below to the mod page, this mod does not have a long amount of content, but it is a very focused amount of content for Kamchatka, but the Frozen East. Since the collapse of the USSR, then the remnant government in Siberia, we have been stuck on our own in Kamchatka. Living off the land is the best we could, and the sea ever so slightly better. Once, What was once a strong and proud navy has been reduced to banditry and piracy just to survive. While some of the old days remain, many of the members of the fleet have never served in the old Union's navy instead, having joined as their only opportunity at escaping poverty or in search of plunder. Every day the remnant fleet looks less like a cohesive navy and more like a band of common pirates. Every day our traditions and practices are... As Practices are being eroded further and further. All the while, our ships are slowly decaying, missing important parts and expertise for repair. If we hope to regain control of the fleet and root out this rot, serious action must be taken. And now, with this one done, we'll be able to see the extent of our professionalism problems and the decisions menu. In which we do have the National Spirits. Sailor State, which is not too bad, looks pretty good. But then we also have very low professionalism, which is very bad, but the shadow of a fleet. Ivan Yumashev stood on the docks, the cold wind biting at his nose as his hands were shoved deep in his pockets. One of the smaller ships, a converted fishing vessel, was coming back into port after being sent out to raid passing, passing ships. Docking next to the aging Oktyabratskaya Revolucia, it was dwarfed by the battleship's size. Ropes were thrown over the side, and she was secured by the dock hands, and the gangplank was lowered. The disheveled or disheveled captain, a veteran who had been with the fleet since the collapse of the USSR, began to descend. No luck, Grigorovich. Asked Yum Yumashev, picking up the mood. No, sir, as he beckoned towards the truck parked up behind Yumashev. The doors opened and the two men began running towards the ship, a third following behind with a stretcher. Mercenaries appeared that appeared just as we were preparing to board. Kalaganov took a bullet to the throat. Yumashev went. Another man gone. Kalaganov had been with the fleet since the war and the other men had left to find their own fortunes, deciding it was better to keep their plunder for themselves rather than share with the fleet. Kalaganov had stuck with them. This entire endeavor was to protect men like him, men who still believed in the traditions of the Red Navy, that his legacy was worth saving. This is where it led him, being carried off a fishing boat under the shadow of a rusting fleet. In the far corner of the world, having died a thief, he deserved better than that. Yumashev took his eyes off the stretcher being carried past him to notice Grigorovich's eyes staring at him intently, only to flicker away as they met his gaze. Something has to change here. Something must. Oh, or, you know, Kamchatka is cool, but what if we just rename this, like, Western Alaska? That might be really cool as well. But the Frozen East is finished with, uh, we do what we must. While shameful, smuggling is certainly profitable over our time, or... Yeah, in, our re in the region, we have made connections with several different groups, be they Alaskan, Manchurian, Chinese, or Hawaiian. Everyone has something they want, and it turns out most of them want what each other have. Be they dissident groups in the sphere wanting weapons, or American exporters looking to access Japanese markets. Our fleet of ships, although aging, can act as middlemen for those looking to avoid American-Japanese trade embargo or acquire more illicit goods. We'll make sure to take a share of the profits for our troubles, of course. So, professionalism. Army... Oh, here it is. Uh, let's see... Our fleet's cohesion and professionalism has decayed to the unacceptable levels. Our junior officers and sailors must be brought back into line with the standards and conduct befitting of the Red Fleet. Mutinies, electing officers, keeping plunder from the fleet, and unprescribed punishments involving planks must all be clamped down on hard. This is a navy that will practice war communism, not piracy, even if that distinction is lost on those contributing their goods to the fleet. A higher level of professionalism will mean when conducting raids, we all fail less often and gain more supplies. In addition to giving us more daily political power, our professionalism <laughs> is very low, though, so... Uh, decrease by 10 more manpower or stamp out unsanctioned piracy. Oh boy, we're gonna need a lot of peepee, -pee, but the price of loyalty. The last crate was loaded back on board with a small boat Captain Grigorovich conducted his raid from. Finally, they had found some success. The Chinese vessel they had raided had just been taken completely by surprise by the Don Raid and handed over a portion of the cargo without a fight. Good job, lads. You've done the fleet proud today. Kozlov, take us home. Kozlov still stood deadly still. Why should we go back to surrender our hard-won plunder to the fleet so we'll only be sent out again to die like Kalganov? We've been taking talking, sir. We think it'd be best to head further up the coast and say that this is where Captain Savetsky went to with his crew, he has connections, and what let us keep all the profits. Grigorovich paused. This sounded like a lot like mutiny. He rested his hands on his pistol and responded sternly. Kozlov, enough of this talk. Take us home and I'll see you. See to it. You all get the share you are due. Kozlov didn't move. We earn this, sir, not you, Mishev. Why should we get... Why should they get a cut of our work? 
when they sit back on land doing nothing. You are a sailor in the Red Navy, Kozlov. You do your duty to serve the fleet and the nation take us home. Gorovich grew tense. You could feel his hand beginning to shake, resting on his holster. Kozlov spat. Fat pigs living off of our efforts. Good men like Kalaganov die, and Yumashev wastes it on keeping ships afloat that should have been scuttled years ago. Gorovich had heard enough. Unholstering his gun and aiming it towards Kal Kolzov, or Kozlov, he turned to the sailor on his right and began, Siv uh, Sidor, take Kozlov to the hole. He made Grigorovich's eyes widen as he realized too late what was happening. Sidorov fired. Grigorovich slumped to the ground not long after his body was unceremoniously dumped overboard as the ship turned for the north. We are losing control, and that is a mutiny. And man, if we can, if it was me... I probably would have shot him before he shot me, but we take what is necessary. Running a navy requires oil and all manner of supplies to keep both men and ships in working order, none of which are produced here in Kamchatka. With no prospect of them developing natively in the area, we must secure the source from outside, unfortunately. Because of said lack of industry or resources, we have, have nothing to exchange for them, so we need to acquire them through other means. Fortunately, the Pacific is full of stray ships weighing down with oil, weapons, and other useful supplies. Often coming from wealthy nations such as Japan or the USA, they can afford to share a small portion of the cargo with those who need it, need it more. As long as we are careful with what we can get, we need without antagonizing the great powers too much. Ooh, oh, maybe we should do that one first. I want to do some piracy. I love piracy, as long as it doesn't affect me. Smuggling network. Size is one. So that's a zero. Fuel smuggling is zero. Use a zero combo is no manpower. Oh, weapons, zero. Okay. And commodities. And how much uh, political power do we get a day? 0.23. Well, that is not very good. If you'd like to read about the mod modern bogatier, please go right ahead. Happens every campaign. An interesting story, if nothing else. To save ships. To save men. Let's get some more stability. We must keep the tradition alive while our ships are the body of our navy, our men are our soul. Our tradition. As long as there is an unbroken line passed on from the old guard of the new, we can continue to call our fleet the Red Navy. All we do need to do is to preserve that lineage, whatever the cost may be. Alright. So, the Americans are unconcerned. The Japanese are vigilant. So, piracy. We raid a range of targets. While well, we raid a range of targets. Realistically, the Americans and the Japanese are the only ones able to do anything about it. As such, it may be wise to limit our activities against ships flying their flags despite their more precious cargoes, unless we want to avoid their wrath and have the possibility of working with them in the future, should the opportunity present itself. We have 10 supplies. Oh, boy. Uh, they're vigilant, which sounds like it's a bad thing. Let's anger the Japanese, anger the Americans. Um, failure? Hmm. There's a 29% chance of failure. A 33% chance of failure. Uh, American cargo freighter. Weapons, oil tanker. I'm going to go for the Americans because they're unconcerned. So that would be okay. Oh, wait. Can we just... I'll do all of them. Oh, wait. We can... Oh, there it goes. Create fuel shipment. We will add remove 5,000 fuel from our stockpile over five days and create one fuel shipment. Okay, so maybe we should not train our ships then. That's probably a really bad idea. There's no point in even training our ships. Train our ships. What am I doing? What am I doing? If that's the case, let's go and do that. We get one fuel shipment. Because it's all about supplies right here. And so it starts to toast. Captain Ivan M Maslenikov and Admiral Grigory Shredren sat in a dim office sharing a bottle of vodka. There was little else to do out here, and either way, both men felt in no mood to do anything else. As going to look like crap, Grigory, Maslenikov swirled around his glass and looked up. Yumashev is losing it. Grigorovich isn't coming back. Sh uh, Sheridan gave a slow, slow, uh, slow nod, eyes fixed only on the fr and table in front of him. Maslenikov continued, I said this would happen. Of course, abandoning communism led to this. There's no real goal, drive, or the men have nothing to strive for except for their own survival. Without discipline, they will turn more desperate, all the while corrupt crypto-capitalist officers exploit their fear for profit. Shudlerin squinted while Maslenikov might be a little overzealous. He did have a point. The men were told, do it for the fleet, but unless you had been there from the beginning, that meant very little. Even the old guards were beginning to lose faith. All they saw was their own desperate situation, the occasional haul after a successful raid, then what appeared to be their ticket out of here but taken away from them in order to preserve some nebulous idea in, rust in rusting ships. Something would have to be done. Shredren, Shredren knew it. Beyond instilling discipline, beyond cracking down on corruption and rogue crews conducting piracy, piracy of their own accord, the fleet needed its soul back. It needed a purpose. If it was going to continue to exist, it needed to justify its own existence. Anyone desperate enough with a few friends in a boat can be a pirate. We have to aspire to be more. Shedrin raised his glass. To the indomitable Soviet people, Maslenikov's, Maslenikov's eyes lit up. In turn, he raised his. To the indomitable Soviet people. Well, we'll see what happens. And let's see. We have one fuel shipment. Add fuel to the stockpile. We'll add 5,000 fuel to... Okay, so if we do that, we just get our own stuff back. So, um, I don't really care. We get 67 every day, which is not very much. Hopefully, this goes successfully, because we don't really have a lot here. Yeah. I hope it goes successfully for us. Ah, Bowman successor. Oh, look at that. Fuel from smuggling. Well, it's two safe ships. A navy without any warships can barely call itself a navy. 
Well, that adequate facilities to build new ships at any reasonable rate or standard at least. We must preserve what we have. Ten subs, four destroyers, and a flagship of the battleship Octiabriskaya Revolucia. They are aging but not dead. While these ships still float, they are our men to crew them. The spirit of the old union lives on. Failure? Oh no, the ship we dispatched to the search for parading targets returned empty-handed. The captain and crew have offered several excuses, but all that matters is that they failed their mission. All that is to be done now is to try to learn what lessons we can, improve our situation, and try again. An unexpected arrival, though. At the docks of Petropavlovsk, Kamchatsky, a boat has arrived from the city of Anchorage in the American state of Alaska. The only passenger is a young American man named Steve Smith, who claims to be a touring traveling alone, or tourist traveling alone, and has the documents to prove it, determined about fresh face. It's hard to know if he will survive for long in the Russian anarchy that we find ourselves in, and it's up to us if he gets a chance to. Licking his lips, Ivan Yumashev's eyes skimmed the report once more before it said he set it aside. Picking up a cigarette, a luxury these days, was looted from a passing, passing Japanese ship he had heard. He proceeded to light it with his free hand. An American tourist, huh? That sure wasn't something you saw every day. It might be worthwhile to come to meet this American person before he leaves and give him a tour of the fleet. It might, for once, take his mind off the sorry st state of shameful piracy that the Pacific fleet had been reduced to. If nothing else, it'd probably impress some men. Add fuel to the stockpile. No thank you. Our unsanctioned piracy. Entry 1, the Pacific Fleet. Visiting, visiting Kamchatka was more eventful than I thought it would be. Sailors and military ships and the docks alike stared at my boat as it came to a stop. When I told them I came from America, the sailors all seemed really excited for some reason, and then a bunch of them wanted to shake my hand. I felt like a celebrity, almost. That feeling only increased when Admiral Yumashev, the leader of the Pacific Fleet that controls Kamchatka, came to meet me in person. He said the city were, <clears throat> we were in was called Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, and gave me a tour of his fleet. The Admiral was really nice and patient, although his English wasn't great. He said he learned it back during the war, the big one, so he must be a couple decades out of practice. Still, it was better than nothing. Something was off about the fleet, though. The ships are all dated, but they still must all need fuel and parts, which I didn't see any industry for. And I didn't see any trading vessels at the dock. I heard that the economy of Kamchatka depended on piracy, but I didn't think good men like the Admiral and those sailors would resort to it. Still, I guess everyone needs to eat, and if half the things I heard about the state of Russia are true, I guess I can't blame them too much. At least Admiral Yumashev arranged for another boat to take me to Magadan. Land ho, and there he goes. Hopefully he makes it through. Our men will continue to conduct piracy of their own accord. While some of the spoils will make their way back to us, this will affect our authority over the men. Oh, well, that's not good. Um, there's nothing we can do, though. Oh, wait, hold on. We need at least one convoy. More than 50 manpower. We need. We just need more convoys invested in this network. Um, well, we're trying. We're really trying here, but... Uh... Screw that. There you go. You gotta make that convoy now. You can make one convoy with... Oh my goodness. One dockyard equals one convoy in about... A little in more than two months. Holy bad words. Well, we get two convoys here, so... Oh boy. Oh boy. Secure our position. Putting aside the prospect of an intervention from Japan or America, which would have no hope of repelling. We're relatively secure in our position by sea, with no other local powers having any sizable navy that could hope to challenge ours despite its poor shape. Although the forest, mountains, and the sheer size and remoteness of our land offer good natural protection, it may still be prudent to consider the defenses of our northern regions. While in terrible shape compared to our glory days, the plunder and supplies we will bring in from our raids and smuggling missions will leave us relatively well off for this part of Russia. Should any upstart band of robbers or resurgent force in the area come knocking, we should be prepared. Due to the advantageous terrain, such an effort should be relatively inexpensive. If we are intelligent and builder defenses to incorporate natural barriers, we could undertake such an effort cheaply and quickly. Cool. Alright, so now we can do something here. At least it helps out. Network efficiency. We remove a convoy, lose some manpower, move, remove profits, expand the net uh, weapons network. I'm not sure which one we want to do first. Increases the size of a weapons network. Um, gives us 20 more units of basic infantry levels every time the smuggling profits commission is complete, or commodities network. You get 10 more supplies every time the smuggling profits complete. Ooh. Remove 5 days from the smuggling... Oh. Oh, so you get it more often then. I kind of like that. You get it more often because of... Well, I mean, unsanctioned privacy. That one's not really good, but... Hmm. Hmm. Move 5 days from smuggling profits. So... Wait, so smuggling profits. Very little professional sailor state... I don't... We're not raiding. I mean, our guys are raiding. But... Uh... Oh, so we have 15 supplies, one fuel. Vigilant and vigilant. When can we do that again? Oh, we need more... How do we get more naval XP when we're trying to get more fuel? Um... I'm not sure how we're supposed to do this, then. 
I guess. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's what it is. Smuggling profits. We get three supplies and five units of basic infantry rifles. Well, we only have... How many convoys? Two? Right? We only have, like, two, two convoys. Literally two convoys. So, it's either we do one of these, or we can do this one, and it comes a little bit faster. Or, when everything comes, we do get some more guns. Do we really need the guns, though? I want more supplies. Supplies are really nice, because if we have more supplies, we can probably widen recruitment standards, maybe? Hmm. Stamp out unsanctioned piracy. Uh, if this happens every day, by five, five days faster, screw it. Let's go with uh, supplies. Supplies sound really good. So, commodities, network size is one. It uses two convoys and 100 manpower. Okay, not bad. But not great. And Shedrin's grand plan. Vice Admiral Gregory Shedrin has a proposal for us. Alongside sweeping measures to improve the professionalism of the fleet and the efficiency of its operations, his other suggestion is particularly ambitious. The ship management interface will become available to us where we can view the supply status of our ships. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, what do we have here now? Add stock, add fuel, create a fuel shipment. We will add, remove, add fuel. Uh, I don't care about that one. We want to do that one, right? The Americans are unconcerned, which is good. Cut back. I don't want to... I, I'm not cutting back. No way. No, 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 no. Get some more fuel for this. this. That's totally fine. I'm not sure what we're going to do with the fuel, but that's okay. Expand the fuel network. At least 30 convoys. More fuel, more fuel, more fuel. Secure position. And the grand plan. Very nice. And now we get 13 supplies. And 5 more basic infantry rifles. What do we do with supplies, though? They're unconcerned. We have 33 supplies. Where do I stick the supplies? Actually, at this point, ooh, maybe I should have done increased network efficiency. That probably would have been nice. Because we know fuel gain plus one. It's kind of nice. Secure positions, okay, even though, well, realistically, we can't really build very much here. Because we're already maxed out on all the stuff, too, so. Hopefully, we can use a command power for stuff as well. So, uh, fuel shipment, piracy, I mean, that'll help us out. Oh, basic artillery is nice. Um, well, we're probably going to come over here and get some more output, probably. Probably factory, at least dockyard output, because we need more convoys, which just, it's barely going to go up. It's barely going to go up. Okay, so Shidren's grand plan. Grigory Shidren stood in front of Yumashov at his desk. Uh, in the last days of the war against the Germans, a plan was being prepared in which a small detachment of subs would sail from the Pacific Fleet to Akhangalsk to try to do what they could to tilt the war in our favor, as I'm sure you remember. I do, answered Yumashev inquisitively. Obviously, it never came to fruition with the loss of Arkhangelsk and shortly after the Union, but as far as I know, the front reclaimed Arkhangelsk in the West Russian War and Grigory no. Yumashev interrupted as he slouched back in his chair. He had hoped he was going to be presented with a new serious way out of the fleet's troubles, but instead he was going to get, in, he anticipated, a far-fetched, unworkable, unproductive plan. You aren't going to suggest we try to sail to Arkhangelsk? How will that solve anything? Their port freeze is worse than ours from what few reports we hear they are bombed to heck. Even if they are still out there, our ships can barely make it across the Pacific if they even can make it out of the harbor. Yes, but, Shedron tried to interject, most of our men have more loyalty to plunder than the old Union, and if we're going to get there, we either need to make it through a sheet of literal bad word ice, or through Japanese Japanese or American controlled waters, who I don't need to remind you we have spent the best part of 20 years antagonizing. Shudren paused for a moment, then what was this all for then, sir? We followed you every step of the way. When the Union collapsed, we stayed in Vladivostok, and when the Presidium collapsed, we followed you here. We, we have all done things that we that will trouble us forever, all to protect the fleet. If we stay here, the fleet will slowly fall apart. The old guard will die, and that will be the end. Everything we did for nothing. We can wait for your goal to end his thugs to reassert themselves, but how long do we have? Even after all of this, we are sailors of the Red Fleet. We find engagements, fight them, and win. Put everything we have into one final effort. Put one push to return home, only to only have one other group in the Union that kept fighting. We fail, we succeed or f we fail, but at least we take action. Bring me your plans. Dismissed. Assess our assets, or air assets. Along with the aging warships in our possession, we have a s no, small number of planes. Although they haven't flown in years, it could still be useful to see that if any of them still fly. They will come in useful spotting potential targets, patrolling our coast, or maybe even as smuggling vessels. That is, of course, if we can find anyone brave enough to go up in one. Nice. Gotta get some planes. That's kind of cool. And we're literally not... Oh my goodness. Uh, Alright, at least we'll get another convoy. Which, at this point, I think I'm going to increase the efficiency. Yeah, that's a little better. That's a little better. Even though we got to keep do keep an eye on manpower. If I have to, I will delete this division. Oh, wait, we can't. Gosh darn it, the dev knew what... Or the devs knew what I was going to do. 
Oh, look at this. Okay, so, open ship management interface. Wow, the port of Petropavlovsk, Kamchatsky. In order to make the journey to the WRF, a ship must be fully supplied with fuel. Any ship that is both of its needs fulfilled will be displayed in green. When it's time to begin our journey to the WRF, all fully supplied ships will travel with us. If a ship is left unsupplied, it will be unable to make the journey and be left behind. Should all ships be fully supplied when we make the journey, excess supplies will be taken to the WRF and converted at the ratio of 400 supplies to one loot. Click on a ship import or the ship's name list to check the exact status of what the ship and add or remove fuel shipments and supplies. We have 38 supplies, 2 fuel shipments. Uh, the Octia Bravskia Revolucia. Oh, that's, that's really cool. Oh, we're gonna need so many supplies. Holy crap. So, if I just delete some ships, is that okay? Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, crap. Uh, no, you don't get this. Give them one. Oh, so, the, oh, there it is. That's a battleship there. Um, if anything, I want the ship to be able to do okay. So, there, you can have all the supplies. <laughs> Alright, so that's cool. That's actually extremely awesome. I love it. I love it. I think that's really neat. If the, if the devs are watching, I think that's awesome. I really think that's really, really awesome. Uh, actually, and if you look at this, America's unconcerned, they're vigilant, we have no supplies. Um, Army profession or professionalism is very low. I mean, can't get much worse than this right now. But uh, how do we get more professionalism? Maybe, maybe it's still in the focus tree. Review the networks. Remove five days. Oh, that's not bad. Appeal to America. Okay, there you go. Exactly. Deal with the professionalism crisis. Effects of unsanctioned piracy mission will be reduced. Titan rules of engagement. Okay, it's not bad. Increased training standards. Army professionalism goes up. Get an extra decision to deal with them. Um, it seems like it's a good idea to increase professionalism. Review the networks. I like that one. I really want to get this stuff more, 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 more. Increase the size of our fuel smuggling network, giving us one fuel shipment every month. Whoa, that's not bad. How about review the networks? While most of our smuggling networks have proven to be mo our most reliable source of supplies over these past few years, like all aspects of the fleet, our inefficiency and corruption have plagued the networks. Officers and men taking their own personal cuts, unprofitable routes, and unnecessary risks all need to be routed out to improve the system. It would be wise to conduct a review to determine which areas are the most profitable and assess if there are any opportunities that we are not yet taking advantage of. We need to take out whatever chances we can get out from here. Which That field stream is nice. You know what? I think I've already read this one. Uh, I want to deal with the professionalism, though. If we can do that and be as efficient as possible, then we then every time we get a shipment in, that'll be better than what we currently get. Our fleet's cohesion and professionalism has decayed to an unacceptable level. Our junior officers and sailors must be brought back into the line, with the standards and conduct befitting of the Red Fleet. Mutinies, electing officers, and keeping plunder from the Red Fleet must all be clamped down on hard. Shredren's plans will seek to bring about both an increase in standards and a change of methods. Both, he claims, are necessary not only to carry out Operation Ithaca, but to survive as a Navy if we hope to reintegrate the WRF. If, this is, if we're going to be as successful as possible, I'd like to know your opinion. Like, if we actually can get over to the WRF, which is literally halfway across the world, um, should I continue the campaign, like, going into, like, playing as a WRF? Hmm. Well, only if, you know, maybe. Maybe. If Zukov wins, then yes. If not, maybe not. I'd really like if Zukov could win, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So we have no supplies. Oh, uh, Americans are unconcerned. There we go. And, oh, we need more naval XP to do this guy. I need another dockyard. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, decisions to take. Create fuel shipment. Cut back, you know, add fuel to stockpile. There we go. Create fuel shipment. Cool, why not? Why not? Brazil wins. Cool. They're unconcerned still. Collapse of the triumvirate. When can we, oh, it's just need more naval XP. Hopefully we can raid the Americans and they don't care. 29% chance of failure. That's still not bad, but... Reintroduce naval commissars. Ivan Maslenikov, one of the loudest communist voices in the fleet, has proposed a reintroduction of naval commissars to the fleet. He sees the gradual abandonment of the role as a direct cause of the fleet's ship slip and standards. By bringing back the commissars, he claims, we will be able to instill in the men the sense of greater cause, and more importantly, bring back much needed... Some much needed discipline. This will shift the fleet back towards a more communist system, at least on the surface level, which has naturally raised some eyebrows with those in becoming uncomfortable, who are becoming comfortable with the current state of affairs. This should, however, be of little concern to us, as they are precisely whose influence we hope to shatter. 
That's a lot of political power. Oh, here we go. Nice, finding some stuff. A gift from the friend, though. On the right ran a sawmill north of Petropavlovsk, Kamchatsky. It was a small operation, mainly supplying the city itself, and most of that business went to the fleet. This, of course, did not stop the tax collectors from the fleet coming every month, while Andre often tried to negotiate more favorable rates in return for his long-time support. It was to no avail. It was not so bad, though, at least it meant from a visit from Lieutenant Gullin. Yes, he came to collect the tax, but also brought with him plenty of treats that the fleet had acquired from passing ships or their smuggling networks. Or more specifically, what Gullin's associate acquired, hidden from the fleet, then passed it on to him to sell on, allowing them both to make a handsome profit. Andre, how are you? Good to see you. Business is going well, I hope. Golan inquired as he walked up, walked up to Andre sitting outside the mill. I'm sure you do. Got anything good for me to soften the blow? Responded Andre dryly. Oh, actually, I do just for you. I kept them aside. He fumbled in the back of his truck and pulled out two bottles of vodka. Mm, how much? Asked Andre as Golan began to walk towards him with a grin plastered across his face. Oh, no, Golan laughed. This is a gift. I thought you might like to celebrate your new baby boy I heard about last month. One for you and one for him when he's a bit older. Andre was taken aback. Um, okay, thank you, Nicola. Are you sure? You don't have to. Oh, nonsense. As Golan thrust the bottles into Andre's hands, things have been going well for me, lady. With what with my little business on the side, I pay to share the good fortune, especially with such a loyal patron of mine. Thank you, Nikolai. Restrict leave. The effects of unsanctioned piracy mission will be reduced. We lose more political power. Wow. What is this one? Naval XP goes up. Increase prof army prof naval professionalism basically by going up. Conduct fleet-wide naval exercises. I like that one quite a bit. Uh, but we need the political power to deal with that. So... Can we keep it? Uh, a higher level of professionals will mean that conducting, when conducting raids, will fail less often and gain more supplies. In addition, give, addition to giving us more political power. So as long as we keep getting more and more political power, uh, then we can keep doing these missions. Why do recruitment circles? Ooh, yeah. I don't know if I want this one, so we'll take that one off. I like the navel because we can use it pretty much immediately, and we don't have the extra manpower to, to or political power to do this one. Unsanctioned piracy mission, huh? Unsanctioned. Dealing with unsanctioned piracy. Uh, the effects will be reduced, but does that mean we get less supplies? That seems pretty risky, but since we have the political power, well, well, we could try it. It does reduce our supplies. That's actually... Oh, I don't know if I like that. Get some more of that, though. We could use that naval XP. Research speed is nice. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be really helpful. We'll go do it anyways, I guess. Um, American oil tanker. We've captured a large American oil tanker in the Sea of Okhotsk. While well, it's flying the American flag and registered to an American company. From the resistance the ship put up, giving a cease to small arms fire and firing water cannons at our boarding party, we had expected the ship to have a significant mercenary contingent. Once the second and third boarding party had snuck up on the starboard side of the ship, however, and swept the deck, causing a number of casualties, we did not find the mercenaries we expected, but a largely Russian crew. It appears they had been hired as cheap workers for Americans, but this voyage alone would pay more than most Russians would earn in a year, leading to the determined resistance. Unfortunately for those that survived, they will likely earn nothing as their cargo is now on their way to our port. They expected riches, but their capitalist masters would have reaped the real profit, and a number of them lie dead in defense of the crumbs they would have been tossed. Having liberated the real price from the capitalists, as black gold will be shared amongst our hungry fleet. Transfer to the fleet immediately, get more supplies, and political power, keep it in our stores. We get fuel, ooh. Transfer to the fleet. Good. Actually, our professionalism is very low still. Alright then. We get, it goes up another, a few more days. And we can currently do what? Add more fuel. Create fuel shipments. I guess we keep doing that because why not, I suppose. Um, nothing here yet. We need more convoys. Convoys, convoys, convoys. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Um, failure. They're unconcerned. I like that the Japanese are unconcerned. The Japanese again. They're, they're the rich ones that we can get to. Very low. It's nine. That's not bad. So, do, does that? How much does that affect our political power gain, though? Very low professionalism. It does give us slightly more political power. So, it is what it is. Titan rules of engagement. We do get less attack, but that doesn't really matter. We get more political power. Up until now, despite raids often being ordered by the fleet, there have been little guidance for exactly how ships should go about such raids. It's been a long time since we have operated with any coherent doctrine. While some captains take a non-violent approach, some especially more hot-headed ones in command of our military vessels decide to go all in guns blazing. Or even worse, leave with a torpedo. Not only is this often counterproductive, but it also seek to draw further ire from the great powers, and violent methods will force ships to defend themselves to an even greater degree. As such, we will enshrine rules of engagement that all crews must follow for the safety of themselves a speedy conclusion of all raids and avoidance of any retribution from outside actors. Good, good, good. 
All right, so increase Komasar's power. Increase army, or just professionalism. I gotta stop saying army professionalism, but it is what it is, you know. Go and keep doing that. We need more convoys. Jesus. Now, I could lower this, cut down on commodities, but we're getting even more supplies, so that's that's pretty useful, so. I don't want to do that. Here, professionals will increase by 6 and get more naval XP, or just get more professionalism. If we do this, we'll decrease by 3, so increase it by more. So that's not bad. To serve the fleet. Ivan Maslenikov stood in front of the first cohort of the fleet political officers, or as you prefer to call them, naval commissars. You've been chosen from amongst the most loyal and dedicated officers from across the entire fleet. You'll be the bulwark against a fascist and capitalist influence that's infiltrated our navy, perpetu perpetuating its decadent or decadent and robber nature in the minds of our good Soviet man. You are to wipe out this influence whenever it rears its head and show no mercy to those who would enrich themselves at the expense of their comrades. He walked down the line and inspected each man in turn, his uniform, his posture, and determination in his eyes. This is what a real navy looked like. These men will lead by example and bring back the glory of the Red Fleet. They will drag every man from the lowest sailor to Admiral Yumashev himself if need be, kicking and screaming to the stand as we expect. Glorious, my friends. Alright, so it's still 18. Not bad. It could be worse. Oh, what's this? Transferring fuel? Fuel gain? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That does not feel good. But this is gone now. Oh, that does not good. Very low. Oh, it's still get slightly more political power. Slightly more. Is it worth it? I don't know. Oh, man. Adding fuel to the stockpile would be nice. Come on. Make that stupid convoy. You got... We have literally two weeks until that's done. Are you kidding me? Next time? Oh. After that type of failure, there's not going to be a next time. Increased standards training. Uh, the problem of plunder. Let's do that one. It seems we have no shortage of plunder. The problem is that making sure it gets back to the fleet's hands. Far too often does the crew head out on a raid never to return. Likely, likely, having made off with the loot themselves, they start a new life somewhere far better than here. It is also not unheard of of our officers to keep loot for themselves, bribing the crews with a smaller portion for their silence and never declaring it to the fleet. We may need to do a bit of bribing ourselves. In order to build up trust and loyalty with the crews, we should codify exactly what each man is entitled to and exactly what should be handed back to the fleet, hopefully. With a stronger system, every man is a king, but we'll know that he stands again by sticking with the fleet cool Every man oh finally we got another one uh we can do it faster that might be good to do we get even more rifles which uh every time it completes do we really need rifles though right now i mean it seems like we need supplies and fuel that seems like the only things we really need this one gives us more supplies we need three convoys to get even more fuel which is not bad. I think I just want to continue just making this go as faster, faster, faster. Because that means you get more guns. You get more supplies every time this happens. So, let's keep going with that one, maybe. Uh, let's see. It's very low, which is not good. We could use more naval speed so we can raid even more ships soon. Our, yeah, that's really bad. Remove rogue elements. We need more professionalism. By nine? Every time we sent out a ship, it didn't go very well for us. But ships on the horizon. John Matthews, captain of the Penelope, had a bad feeling about this voyage since it had barely left Portland. He had, against his better judgment, allowed a missionary to board the ship, the boy claiming that he wanted to spread the Lord's good will word to the desperate souls of Russia, although he'd introduced himself as Isaac. Glancing at an open passport, it turned out the boy's name was Jonah. He had clearly hidden it after being refused to board other ships. The bu budding preacher, obviously quick quickly caught on that he had a particularly unlucky combination of name and chosen vocation, especially for one helping to make it across the sea. The red morning sun had sealed in around 11.34 a.m. A ship was spotted on the horizon that seemed to be waiting for the Penelope to come closer. Every time she changed course, the ship in the distance had followed. As the ship came into a uh, better view, Matthews could make out a ship of the uh, shape of a small destroyer, the old Nord one that, one that must be taken from the last war. It could be Japanese. Not only did they rarely use ships that old, they would generally leave American ships alone unless they strayed too close to their waters. No point in starting a diplomatic incident over a uh, small cargo shipment. Oh, over shrimp. Yes, please. Maybe it was Mexican or Canadian, but they were nearly in Russia. No way they would be this far out. Could it be Chinese? Did they even have a navy? Uh, certainly could be Russian. He had been to Magadan before, never seen anything other than American cargo ships or ramshackle Russian fishing boats. But the mystery destroyer came ever closer. Whoever it was, they seemed intent on boarding him. Matthews radioed his men to get to the safe room. He would stay on the bridge and await whoever it was and prayed whoever was in store for him, or whatever was in store for him. In this next account, would be uneventful. Who are they? Well, we're here to take your booty. Uh, we do need more of that. Uh, go and do that one then. And 
we should have enough, but change in tactics. As the destroyer came closer into view, he could see the end sign it was flying. Although he didn't recognize it, the Red Star and Hammer and Sickle suggested it was Soviet. But they collapsed years ago, and from what he had gathered in Ma Magadan, the old Soviet remnant in the area had been pushed back to Irkutsk far inland. Nonetheless, a smaller boat had been dispatched and was heading towards the ship as the destroyer matched pace beside him. Looking across the bridge through his binoculars, he could see the bearded man in what seemed to be a naval uniform looking back at him in exactly the same manner. The men must be aboard the boat now. He head down behind the control panel on the bridge. The door was locked. Hopefully, they would leave him be and do whatever they needed to do on the ship and leave. Then there was a knock on the bridge door. He peeked his head up above the panel and caught the eyes of a man locking. Who smiled? Another knock and muffled, Hello! in a thick Russian accent. Wearily, he made his way to the door through the window. The man he assumed was an officer had stood back and was holding a clipboard under his arm, flanked by two sailors, each with a submachine gun. As Matthews opened the door, the officer was still smiling again in broken English. Hello, sir. My name is Lieutenant Mikhail Yakuton. Yakontov, a Soviet Navy. I am here to check documents. Matthews was in part relieved at the amicable nature of the man, but equally confused. Documents? Soviet Navy? It was saying to the free state of Magadan, the Soviet Union had, hadn't existed in decades. He showed the man what documents he had, but the man gave a practice side. Matthews was pr pretty certain he hadn't even had read them, and doubted if he could even have the... Could, he could even have... He had he actually wanted to. Wow. I'm sorry, sir. You failed to fill in proper import document. Part of cargo must be seized for payment of import tax. Import tax, proper doc- Oh, these were pirates. Polite, well-armed pirates hiding behind a facade of bureaucracy. That's got to be the best pirate I've ever seen. Cool. My apologies for mispronunciations. Oof. My bad. Oh, my goodness. This is not very good. We can't get any more professionalism. Hopefully, there's other ways we can get more professionalism, because this is not very good. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is not going very well for us at all. Oh, boy. Alright, so let's just do a neutral one. That's the best chance we have of doing stuff here. Hopefully we do well here. Um, I mean, it's not like we can just throw these, like, for uh, the capital ship here. We throw in a bunch of, we don't have that many supplies anyway, so I'm not sure how we're supposed to be able to do this and be successful at it without any more political power gain. So, yeah, we're kind of screwed, it looks like. But we'll see what happens. Investigate the Quartermasters. Determining who is owed and what in principle is one thing, making sure it is put into practice is another. The Quartermasters run their own kingdom in the warehouses, getting the final say over who has allocated which supplies, and more importantly, keeping inventory of exactly what they have in store. We should use our newfound political officers to inv investigate and oversee the Quartermasters, removing the worst offenders and reining in those that can be brought to heel. The fleet cannot have a cadre of bureaucrats undermining it at every turn. Yeah, we definitely need more political power. This is not enough political power to do anything. A weapon shipment. We've recently looted a shipment of weapons from a passing cargo. Ship. For each for such a deadly cargo, the ship was relatively lightly defended despite the resistance the mercenaries aboard were preparing to put up. They quickly stood down once their destroyer had fired a few salvos uncomfortably close to the ship's hull. With the mercenaries putting down their weapons and our crews safely aboard, we com commandeered as many crates as we could transport and let the ship carry on its way with a considerably lower load success. Alright, it's not bad, but I'm not sure why we need guns. What's the point of guns? I like the political power, but still... Uh, to combat that, we got to do that. Codify plunder shares. Uh, Unsanctioned piracy. That's really hurting us right now. Uh, we don't have enough political power for that, so we'll go with low, maybe? Um, 0.13. I mean, it, it's so little, it doesn't almost do anything for us. Uh, well, I guess we'll do... Uh, increase training standards, I suppose. Due to the des our desperate situation, we have... For too long, been willing to take in whoever was willing to serve. Often, sailors would be brought in and sent out with very little training. If we are to recover a professional corps that needs to be trained, it needs to be trained now. We need to ensure men have been adequately trained to face any eventuality they come across at sea. This will have two main benefits. Firstly, our doctrine of rapid non lethal raids will be more effectively carried out by a trained crew. And secondly, having undergone a more rigorous training regime, we can better instill what is to be a sailor in the Red Fleet. No more will any old ruffian be able to join our ranks. Potential sailors must earn their place. Alright, okay, sounds like a good idea. And our armed professor is still 24, so it's not too bad. It's only going down by 3, but increasing this oversight would probably be pretty good for us to do as well. Wide recruitment, new. Codify, what is it? Well, at least we've got a lot more options here. That's kind of nice. This one's not too bad. I think this one would be good, very good to do as fast as possible. What can we do? Ah. Create a fuel shipment, probably. That'd be good. And then a security service. Yes. Uh, did I read this one? 
No, naval commissars are all well and good, but it may also be prudent to operate a less visible agency to watch over the fleet's activities. And establishing an intelligence agency will create a system of anonymous informants to keep tabs on the compatriots both on land and at sea. Where well, the commissar's power comes from the from the presence. To deter any over disloyalty, the power in our new agency will be in its, its invisibility. No sailor will know who as any potential informant could be. No captain will know of which of his officers he can conspire with to hide and plunder. No quartermaster will be able to bribe a warehouse worker. We will be in all places, and wherever our ships will travel in the Pacific, so will our eyes. Which is fine with the cost. At least get us more political power, because my goodness, we definitely need that. Um, hmm. We can only get 0.25, which is not bad. We have low, which is not great. But, if we can get to maybe... Is it this one? Oh, it's either one, really. It doesn't really matter which one. Code of Flight Punishers, that'd be really good to do, but help mitigate that for now. Manpower, I'm not really concerned about manpower. Oof. Hmm. Because I don't want it to go any... I, I do not want to go any lower than 21. I really don't. We're at 69. If we wait, though, 10 days, we get 50 more political power... And then we can do this again. So, oh, I think we're going to have to bite the nail here. But we can increase the network efficiency. It's not bad. Uh, but I think we might want to keep doing this a little bit more. Because currently we get this much. I think what would be good, wait to get another one. So that way we can get some more fuel. Okay, no, maybe not. Convoys, even more supplies. Commodities? We're going to need so many supplies. So maybe we'll wait to get commodities. Let's wait to get commodities. Make our move. The time is now. From our reforms, we are starting to see real changes. More ships are returning with cargo holds full of plunder. More of this plunder is making its way back to the fleet. And more of that plunder is making it to the, place, making it to the places where it's most needed. Despite our best efforts, some holdouts remain, often groups of ex-sailors and mutineers, who have left the fleet with all their experience and continue to operate out of remote bases. We will begin planning an operation to wipe out these pirates unassociated with the fleet. Any other group operating on the peninsula puts our plans in jeopardy. We must assemble our best men to raid these thugs and stamp out all these robbers once and for all. So we need even more reforms for now. So, but we do have 100, even though we do have very low professionalism. And how we do this? We need at least 90. Okay. This is definitely costly to do it like this, but now it's going to continue to go down by 2. This is incredibly costly. That's not good. I want to do that one so badly, but we cannot yet. But at least we have the option available, and we only get 0.19. All right. The next one we've got to do is increase Commissar powers, so we get even more political power every day. It's not worth very much at all, but... Come on. Come on. There we go. It's low. That's not too bad. Not too bad. And, yeah. We've got to keep doing that one. we just got to keep reducing that. But we'll try to make our move. And once we do get another 50 political power, but let's go and review the networks, maybe. Was it a legitimate state? Slightly more political power, more stability. No longer be able to raid American shipping, but their concern will decay at a much faster rate. Well, who cares about their concern if we can't raid them? Finding, finding an inn. Naval attaché. Japanese concern about a piracy will no longer decay. Oh boy. Poke the Kraken. Must, uh, ooh. If that's the case, we can go down here and go there. Um, it hurts our ability to raid American ships, though. Must be at least angry. Well, let's do a review of the networks then. I've already read this one, so if you'd like to read that one again, please go right ahead. So, we're going to have to wait and see what happens. Alright, we got that one done. Um, research speed is nice, but we're pretty much done with that. Let's get some industry, maybe? That seems like a good idea, right? Making a move and review the network so we get even more profits more quickly. So now we have 53. And unconcerned, unconcerned. 21% chance of failure. 25, 25. I think we let's keep doing the Americans one for now, maybe. Let's try that one. Okay, feel sheet, man, that'd be cool. Gotta wait for one more. Here, 30 days. It's 25. Oh, I'd love to go do that one. We, but we need more naval XP. Mm. This one's not too bad, actually, but it costs so much more. So, is the middle level of professionalism like 50? Is that the dividing line? Because I don't mind holding on to maybe a little bit more political power. We can take another hit to our professionalism a little bit, like two more times. So maybe we'll just like absorb more political power and codify plunder shares just to get rid of unsanctioned piracy concerns and stuff like that. That might be the way to forward. Contacts in Alaska, 
one more every month. That seems just better overall. Alaska has a significant oil industry and oil, more precisely fuel, as something we are in desperate need of. Fortunately, we are not alone. Japan and her puppets want possession of some sources of oil for hungry fleets and hungry industries. Although we would struggle to pay for the oil by ourselves, if we act as a middleman connecting Japanese businesses with American oil magnates, willing to look past political differences, we can ferry this oil out of America and hopefully keep a small cut for our troubles. Which sounds like a very, 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 very good thing. American oil tanker. Um, it looks like this has happened before. If you'd like to read about this, please go ahead. Transferring stuff. We get 28 more. Oh. What's the difference? Transferring a large fuel shipment to a stockpile. We get one fuel shipment. I'm just going to transfer. I mean, it, it's... Oh, look at that. Fuel gain. I like that a lot. So is that better to do than the other one? Uh, yeah, actually it is. The other one's better to just get fuel shipment. Transferring it five days... 480 is like 200 versus one this one costs like 5,000 so because mm. right now we have how much fuel actually that's 84 every day yeah it's still not worth it I think the other one's better just a solid block of fuel is better when is going to next next one February oh my goodness I think this this thing only has like two years worth of content so I'm not sure if we can actually get this done then in time w when do we have to go like we're not going to be able to leave with all the ships Yeah, how are you supposed to get excess ships and stuff? Because I want the battleship to go. You can have all the fuel you need. Uh, yeah. Fuel-wise, we're doing pretty darn well, I'd say. Bukharin? Bukharin. Because, yeah, fuel, fuel's great. Fuel is super easy to get. Everything else, though. Uh, that's my response. Uh, And context in Manchuria, increase the size of weapon smuggling network. Okay, not bad. Sourcing supplies, okay. Converted ships. Oh, we get some more. Oh my goodness, we need those convoys badly. But we get some more supplies every time, so context in Manchuria. With a significant industry, a strong partisan network, and a vast nation, Manchuria offers plenty of opportunities to expand our smuggling networks. Whether they want to sell off supplies to fund other activities or need weapons quickly, we can connect them with various other groups ac across the Pacific who would be more than willing to trade. Although a relatively dangerous activity but trying to bypass Japanese security hunting both of them and us, we can use some of our native soldiers or native sailors to pose as local fishermen to hopefully avoid suspicion the Japanese are bound not to notice. And on welcome interruption. And we did some more tech. Cool. Alright, it's not 65 yet, so we're doing that one not too bad. Um, uh, this is going to help us with output. Uh, max factories in the state, maybe, but dockyard output? I mean, it's not, it doesn't, there's nothing there. So, resource wise, we're not really missing anything, are we? I mean, technically, yes, we don't. We can't even extract any more, so doing extraction would be kind of worthless. I guess just make more guns, but. Captain Yevgeny Ivanov left Christine's house to go meet up with the men aboard a ship in the docks. Although odd to see Russians in America, there was no there's a small expat community out here in Alaska, so his presence didn't raise too many eyebrows. Just as long as nobody knew the precise nature of his dealings, he would be fine, concerning both what he had planned to leave with on his ship and his relationship with Christine. This optimism, unfortunately for Yevgeny, did not last long. He turned the corner to be faced with four men, all in suits with pistols drawn, and instinctively went to reach for his, but quickly thought better of it as he raised his hands above his head. Yevgeny Ivanov, you are under arrest, you're coming with us, Ruski. One of the men said as he took his pistol and cuffed his arms behind his back and pushed him headfirst into the back of one of the cars. While Yevgeny was half tempted to unleash a tirade of verbal assaults against both the men and their mothers, and equally as tempted to protest his innocence, he knew it would be futile and instead decided to remain silent. It was what he was instructed to do. He just hoped his men would realize something was wrong and leave without, and leave without him. Seems like it's got a nice little business you've got here on, doesn't it, Yev? Said one of the men turning around from his passenger seat. It was now Yevgeny realizations that these were not normal police officers. Wait, this was was this even the police or some other smuggling gang he had gone on the wrong side of? How did they know his name? The man continued. How will we come to an arrangement to make sure it stays that way? But yeah. Um, uh, we're doing really well with fuel. Like, ridiculously well. We have three convoys for fuel and 150 manpower. Yeah, I'm probably going to get rid of that. All right, so with seven days left, we can hit get hit one more time. Oh, the deal. The man laughed for a brief moment, then became deathly silent, staring straight at Yevgeny for a few uncomfortable seconds. You are part of an organization actively working against the U.S. We are aware of your connections and who you work for in representing a group who engages in the interdiction of U.S. shipping and the capture and ransom of American citizens and goods. You are considered an enemy of the U.S. of America. Yevgeny's lips began to dry as the man continued speaking. You, speaking. Your associate, Christine Butler, we are aware of your known, we are aware knows of your activities and continuing to harbor and offer shelter to an enemy of the U.S. will face charges of treason potentially facing the death sentence. 
Yevgeny began to feel faint, but the man kept talking, clearly not noticing. He had shaken him enough, enough that is, we can come to a deal. Yevgeny faintly nodded his head. That man began again, keeping making, keep making these trips. Your activities here are a nuisance, but ultimately unimportant. When you arrive in port, you will rendezvous with our contact, to whom you will provide information about the nature of your operation, its capabilities, equipment, stockpiles, personnel levels, your methods, and importantly, any information you have detailing past and future rating targets. We are sure you will make a reliable ally, but that is unless you want Miss Butler to suffer the consequences of your actions. That was not at all, at all how it was supposed to go. Evgeny felt sick. He had no choice but to accept. Weakly, he allowed... Okay. With the car stopped, almost exactly where it had been picked up. Thank you, Mr. Ivanov. I'm sure you have found a long and prosperous relationship with the agency. Safe travels. He trudged back to his ship. A sense of freedom and dignity shattered within the space of less than ten minutes. Hopefully this doesn't impact our operations too much. Hopefully not. Because we're getting closer and closer to codifying our plunder shares. Because it's almost going down by just one a month. Almost. We're almost there. Almost there. Um, I want to do this one, but I can't spend that much right now. I don't mind doing 50, but really... Uh, let's test it. I'm going to test it out. So 30 is still low. That's good enough. 30 is still low. All right. So maybe we should appeal to America next. America is nothing if not opportunistic, and we have a proposal that can deliver them a victory on multiple fronts. Well, of course, giving us exactly what we want. They've been funding the fastest dogs in Magadan for some time now, as we know much not as a in, not insignificant amount of the supplies sent to them has found its way into our care. If we were to ask for American assistance to leave, safe passage guaranteed through the Panama Canal, along with the opportunity to dock in ports of OF and member states, we would be out of their hair for good, and the Laptaws and Magadan would be able to expand in this godforsaken peninsula. They would also be grateful to have the Red Army Navy finally reunited and our Congos strengthening the position's front against Germany. After all, when their fascists are communists, they will back whoever can give the, can best give the Germans a good beating. With their offer, it seems that they can hedge their bets. Three men in a boat. Uh, Kamak was in command of a tiny fishing vessel carrying a small shipment of weapons towards a remote village in the north of Manchuria to sell to a local partisan organization. His crew consisted of two other Koryaks, Koryaks natives of northern Kamchatka Peninsula, who had offered their service to the fleet in hoping of finding any life other than the one of crushing poverty that they had always known. Where he had expected or more appropriately been promised a life of adventure and opportunity, he had found nothing of the sort instead. He faced near total ostracization from his supposed comrades, always assigned menial tasks and unfavorable postings. When he had been selected for an actual mission, he had been over Joyed, finally expecting an opportunity to prove his worth and dedication to the fleet that he had so far been given him nothing. He sucked it in when he was told he would take his mission because he would blend right in with the Manchurians, or whoever the bad word these partisans actually are, but seeing the run-down fishing vessel uh, and uh, the two boys, barely even 16, beaming with the same enthusiasm he had at their age, hurt him far more. It was their only terrified expressions that he could watch as a Japanese destroyer emerged out of the fog, blasting its horn and sounding its alarm as it bared down on them. A voice was sounding out over the loudspeaker in Japanese, but he had no idea what was being said. After the first few shots from the small arms at the side of the boat, he desperately tried to turn ba around back to the direction it came from, but it seemed of no use. The shots, the shots kept coming. That was until a round from the destroyer's main cannon obliterated the small wooden boat. Made of the Red Navy. <laughs> Create more fuel. Oh, there we go. Okay, so, um, fuel, I mean, honestly, like, let's take a look at fuel again. Oh, look at that. Transferring a fuel stockpile, whatever. Our ships, we have, we need one, two, three, four, five, six more ships need more fuel. We're doing extremely well with this. Um... We get 13 supplies every time it comes in. 20 more rifles. We get 10 more supplies. I think I want more supplies every time it comes in, so that'd be good to do. It does cost political power, which sucks, but whatever. It, it is what it is. 23 supplies is pretty good. Professionalism is fine. We have that enough for now. Uh, can we create some more fuel shipments? Yes, we can. Thank you. The Yasuda Crisis. Goodbye, Yasuda Crisis. Goodbye. Not our problem right now. So we have, like, what is this? two every day, so like five times we can go through this before we lower uh, our professionalism, which is not bad. So then, a legitimate state, ooh. Increase the commodity smuggling. Ah, I think this one's just really good to do. And then convert captured ships. Food, electronics, parts, clothes, tools, cigarettes, and of course, a whole host of goods are required to keep our operations afloat. While we cannot source these from any one location, the connections we have made so far inevitably put us in touch with others who wish to expand their businesses despite their Japanese-American embargo. If they are willing to pay us in kind, we are more than willing to take the risk connecting them with their potential customers. Good. More supplies. And go and do this as well. So now it goes down by one. That's so much better. So then we can actually start improving our professionalism much more quickly. And we have two more fuel. 
Well, an appeal to America. I've been looking over your proposals, Vice Admiral Shedrin. While your restructuring anti-corruption proposals have a great deal of merit, we are already seeing some nascent signs of good news. Your proposal to rejoin the front is still problematic. It relies on an awfully good amount of good fortune coming our way. You must have shuffled the papers on his desk, awaiting Shedrin's response. Of course, Comrade Admiral, but it is, that is the key to all the other reforms. Without a way to leave, we will inevitably resort back to our old ways. We simply have no way of maintaining a full readiness. Professional Navy or on a permanent basis, with the resources at our disposal. I'm sure you have a number of Reports from Admiral Spir Spirodinov attesting to that fact, Shedrin responded. If we promise this and can't deliver, that will be the end of us, Grigory. You must have thought for a moment. It will be no use hoping for an opportunity to fall into our laps. I will drop orders to cease the targeting of American shipping. There's no chance of receiving their aid while we continue hostile operations against them. Perhaps we could implant some small-scale political reforms to show we are worth doing business with. You must have scoffed. Do you think Americans actually care who they're dealing with? They fund those dudes in Magadan. I don't think any coddling of the natives is going to win us any favors. It's worth a try, sighed Shedrin. Oh, it, does, it doesn't have to be anything serious, just something to show goodwill. And we need to make an up an awfully good a lot, an awful good a lot of what, goodwill. My apologies for my pronunciations. I I just apologize. A journey starts with a single step. Absolutely true. But my pronunciations are god awful right now. Oof. So right now I want to maximize political power. Um, that's that's the most important thing. So we'll get this one done, which would be great. Uh, we'll probably have to do some of this stuff now next, just because that's important. Convoys are really oh, there's some. Mm. We get to use those convoys immediately. Get more supplies. We need those supplies immediately. Safe passage passage for Americans. That's not a lot of political power either. Is this one about fuel again? It is. God dang, we have so much fuel. Why is fuel so easy to get? But repair efforts. While some of us would see our aging ships as a curse, the vast majority of our command structure included, they do come with some small silver linings. Although our facilities would be woefully unequipped to handle and repair more modern, thankfully what we have is more than adequate for our current maintenance needs alongside that. Due to their frequent problems in their old age, our dock workers and engineers have become well accustomed to working with our fleet and have become adept at patching their various shortcomings and common problems. That said, there's only so much we can do, and they are not miracle workers. Should the ships fall into a state of serious disrepair, there would be little hope for them. So be it. So be it. All right. Anything else down here? Yes. Um. You know what? I'm gonna do this one too. I think that'd be really good to do. Create more fuel for now. Uh, we have no naval speed to even raid more, but uh, let's do this one. Five days. Every five comes. So does that happen every like? Wait. Hold on. So does that improve like every five days? Like it cuts down every time we do this, it gets five days less. It should be, right? So, like, if it started out at 80 and we did it twice, it should be 70 every single time, right? So, it says total smuggling size is 6. Network efficiency, I mean, it should be, right? No? Hmm. If not, then that's a complete waste, and we should just do commodities. Hmm. Well, I'm learning things every single time we're doing this. Confession, I'm still pretty low, but that's okay. And con con convert captured ships. Though our common practice is to take a small portion of a ship's cargo and send them on their way, we do occasionally come into possession of a new ship. Often courtesy, courtesy to one of our captains' over eagerness on the other or the other ship's captain's belligerence in the face of our men. Either way, these would make good ships to add to our smuggling fleet. With some minor alterations to allow for hidden compartments or disguising them as local vessels, they will no doubt soon become productive, easily paying for the efforts or our efforts, converting them besides. There is never a shortage of desperate men out here willing to risk their lives for a small chance at a profit. Even more fuel. We still have two more fuel. Let me look at that. We're almost done with the fuel stuff. And they're draining our fuel away, which sucks, but whatever. It is what it is. Still 26 is low. Yeah, that's not good. So after that one, I need to get this political power. So administering the system. As our network grows, so does the administrative effort required to keep the tabs on it. We should move some of our more lo logistically minded officers away from the general duties to administrative duties to ensure the system continues to run smoothly and profitably. As our experience grows, we can continue to look for new opportunities and potential sources of income. Finally, we can raid some more stuff. Um, I'm concerned the Japanese don't care. Do the Japanese. Get rid of some more fuel for now. All right, we have more than enough fuel. Everyone's fueled up. So at this point, um, we need more political power, and I'm going to cut back the fuel network because we don't need it anymore for now. We really just literally don't need it anymore. So it's kind of wild to think about. Uh, actually, I'm going to wait to get up to here first before we do the next focus, just because I want to cut back on the fuel. Oh, but I want to do this one first. Mm. 
we don't need to do this. One less fuel every month? It's not necessarily a bad thing, but I want to expand this now. Expand now, don't worry about the fuel. Even though we could use the convoys for later. Ah, oh, man, I hate decisions like this. Do that one then. All right, let's go and do administering the system. And then we shall do a legitimate state. Oh, wait, we can do naval infantry lessons. Oh, wait, wait, so what's more, more down here? Eh, that stuff doesn't really matter too much, though. Pacific Black Market? Oh, what is this? Uh, black Market's cooling off. Maybe, oh, does that mean we can trade for more stuff? Although our smuggling efforts started to secure the basic necessities, we have assembled a l relatively large network. In most ports across the Pacific, we can find a sympathetic official willing to look the other way, or a local legitimate businessman who gleefully waits our next ship. Wherever our ships go, unattainable American or Japanese goods follow. As a result, an emerging black market is beginning to appear with us at the center of the web. While not intended, this could provide a serious source of supplies, much needed in the planning of our operation, hopefully. They won't miss us too much when we are gone. After having intercepted a Chinese oil tanker shortly after leaving port in Manchuria, they were escorted back to Kamchatka. The crew put up no fight whatsoever, and after having taken what oil we required, the crew made it known to us that we would prefer to leave it in the direction of America. In return for the generous contribution to our cause, we dealt with the problems of the belligerent captain and sent them on their way. So answer to the fleet? Uh, just do this one. There you go. Cool. Uh, just, you can do that if you really want to. It doesn't really matter to me. We gotta see this political power, but we gotta get more supplies. I wanna cut back the fuel network. It doesn't really matter, though. It really doesn't matter, but we need to get mm, professionalism. There you go. You can do that one. Even more supplies. So we get 53 supplies, which is so much better than what we had before. Oh my goodness. We have 82 supplies, which is nowhere near the amount of supplies that we really need. Administering the system. And I guess we could try that. Uh, no, I'm, i I got to get the extra political power some way. Um, a legitimate state might help out. If we have any hope of the Americans even considering corporations, we need to convince them uh, that we are more than just a glorified gang of thieves and smugglers. Granted, they would just be forgiven for thinking that based on the activities the fleet has been forced to resort to, so it falls to us to demonstrate that uh, we are a serious actor in the area. While our legitimacy as a continuation of the Red Navy is indisputable, we should prove that we are a legitimate state too, perhaps by implementing some token political reforms and giving some small-scale representation to locals in the civilian government or not. Whether the civilian government has any power or even exists in reality is just a formality but I think I've got to end the episode here. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll hopefully increase our professionalism by a great amount. Get more supplies. Let me know about uh, how you guys have been doing this yourselves. If you've been trying out this mod. And I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.